The Marganez Technology Headquarters gleamed in the morning sun, 40 stories of glass and steel rising above downtown San Francisco. I stood in my father's office, staring out at the city sprawl while he delivered the news that would change everything. David, you have to understand, he said, not meeting my eyes. The board needs someone with more traditional qualifications. Traditional qualifications. I turned from the window, my voice tight. I have a PhD in computer science from MIT. I've developed three of our most successful security protocols. And Michael has an MBA from Harvard. My father countered, shuffling papers on his desk. He understands the business side, the financial aspects. Michael, my cousin, who'd spent more time networking at country clubs than learning about technology, who'd never written a line of code in his life, and now he was taking my position as chief technology officer. This is about the quantum encryption project, isn't it? I asked quietly. Dad's shoulders tensed. Your ideas are too experimental, too risky. Michael has a solid plan for conventional security solutions that our clients understand. Conventional solutions won't protect against quantum competing threats, I argued. Within five years, every current encryption method will be obsolete. My system is theoretical and untested. He cut me off. The board has made their decision. Michael takes over next week. I stood there, absorbing the betrayal. I'd spent the last three years developing a revolutionary quantum-resistant encryption system. While other companies focused on conventional cryptography, I'd seen the future, a future where quantum computers could break any traditional security measure in seconds. And what position are you offering me instead? I already knew the answer. Michael thinks you'd do well in product support. Under his supervision, of course. Product support. A glorified help desk role purporting to my younger cousin the same cousin who used to beg me to help him with his basic programming homework. I see. I reached into my pocket and pulled out a USB drive. Here's my final report on the quantum encryption project. Everything we've developed so far. Dad took it, looking relieved that I was being reasonable. Good. You'll help Michael understand the technical details during the transition. No, I said quietly. I won't. He looked up sharply. David? I quit. The words hung in the air between us. My father's face reddened. Don't be dramatic. This is your heritage, your future. My heritage? I laughed without humor. Grandfather built this company on innovation, on seeing beyond the conventional. He would be ashamed of what you've turned it into. How dare you? I'll have my resignation letter on your desk in an hour. Good luck explaining to the board why your top developer left just as quantum computing threats are becoming real. I walked out, leaving him sputtering. In my own office, soon to be Michael's, I began systematically transferring files, carefully staying within the bounds of my employment contract. The core quantum encryption research was my personal intellectual property, developed mostly in my own time. They'd realized that too late. A soft knock at my door made me look up. Anna Chen, my lead developer, stood there looking worried. Is it true? she asked. Michael's taking over. I nodded. And I'm leaving. She closed the door and lowered her voice. What about the project? We're so close to a breakthrough. I know. I glanced at my screen where complex quantum algorithms scrolled past. How would you like a new job? Her eyes lit up. You're starting something. Not here. Not now, but soon. I handed her a card with only a phone number. If you're interested, call this in two weeks. By the time I finished cleaning out my office, the news had spread. Developers stopped by, some offering sympathy, others looking panicked about their project's future. Michael swaggered past my door twice, already measuring for new furniture. I left Martinez Technology for the last time at sunset, carrying a small box of personal items. My encryption research, the real breakthrough work, was secured elsewhere, along with the true quantum algorithms I'd never shared with the company. That night, in my apartment overlooking the bay, I made two calls. The first was to Dr. Sarah Wong at the National Security Agency's Quantum Competing Division. We've been discussing my research for months. I'm out, I told her. They chose conventional security over innovation. Their loss, she said immediately. Our offer still stands. Full funding, complete autonomy, and the NSA's quantum lab at your disposal. I'll need my own team. Of course. When can you start? 
The second call was to my grandfather, retired now, but still sharp as ever. They gave it to Michael, I said without preamble. Grandpa was quiet for a moment. Your father always did prefer the safe path. Your grandmother, she was the real innovator in the family. She'd be on your side. I'm not giving up the research, I told him. I'm just taking it elsewhere. Good, his voice strengthened. Show them what real innovation looks like. But David, be careful. Your father won't take this well. He was right. The next morning, my phone exploded with messages. Dad, you're making a huge mistake. Come back and we'll discuss options. Michael, don't be bitter just because I'm more qualified. Mom, please, honey, don't throw away your future over pride. I ignored them all and focused on my plans. Within two weeks, I had an office set up in a secured NSA facility outside Washington, D.C. Anna and three other top developers from Martinez joined me. Dr. Wong gave us access to the most advanced quantum computers in the world. We worked in complete secrecy. As far as the tech world knew, I'd taken a research position at a minor university. Martinez Technology announced Michael's promotion with great fanfare, their stock price rising as he promised reliable, proven security solutions. Six months passed. While Michael implemented his innovative conventional encryption, mostly recycled algorithms with fancy new names, we made breakthrough after breakthrough. The first test of our quantum-resistant system exceeded all expectations. Even the NSA's most powerful quantum computer couldn't crack it. Dr. Wong was ecstatic. This changes everything, she said, staring at our results. Every digital system, every network, every database. They'll all need this protection once quantum computers become widespread. I thought of Martinez technology still selling soon-to-be obsolete security solutions to unsuspecting clients. Part of me wanted to warn them. But I remembered my father's dismissal, Michael's smug superiority. Let them learn the hard way. One year into our research, the quantum competing threat became real. Google announced a breakthrough, a quantum processor that could break traditional encryption in hours instead of years. The tech world panicked. Security stocks plummeted. Martinez Technologies stock dropped 40% in a single day. My father appeared on CNBC, sweating as he assured investors that their security solutions were adequate for current threats. I watched the interview from my office, where we were putting the finishing touches on our quantum-resistant encryption system. Anna brought in champagne. Ready to show the world what real innovation looks like, she asked. I shook my head, smiling. Not yet. First, let's watch them realize how badly they need us. The next few months were chaos in the tech security industry. Major companies discovered their encryption could be broken by emerging quantum systems. Banks, governments, and corporations scrambled for solutions. Martinez Technology, under Michael's leadership, announced a quantum security initiative that was nothing more than minimally modified classical encryption. Their stock fell another 30%. Then we made our move. The NSA publicly announced a breakthrough in quantum resistant encryption developed by a classified research team. They would license the technology to private companies for implementation. Every major tech firm bid for the license, including, ironically, Martinez Technology. I sat in on their presentation, hidden behind mirrored glass as Michael fumbled through technical questions he couldn't understand. My father looked considerably grayer than my Wong asked them. Your company has shown little innovation in quantum security. We have a proud history of security solutions, my father began, but Michael interrupted. And we recently hired a quantum computing expert from IBM, he boasted. Dr. Harrison will lead our implementation team. I had to bite back a laugh. Dr. Harrison was known in the field for his skepticism about quantum threats. Another conservative choice, another step backward. After they left, Dr. Wong turned to me. Ready to reveal yourself as the project leader? I thought about it. The temptation to see their faces when they realized the truth was strong. But I had a better idea. Not yet, I said. First, let's make them beg for our technology. Then we'll show them who really owns the future of security. Back in my office, I pulled up the preliminary patent applications for our quantum encryption system. Soon, very soon, Martinez Technology would discover that their industry salvation came from the person they dismissed as unqualified. But first, they would learn just how vulnerable their conventional wisdom had left them and their clients.
I opened my laptop and began typing a message to Dr. Wong, outlining the next phase of our plan. On my screen, quantum algorithms danced, protecting secrets in ways my father and Michael could never understand. They'd wanted traditional qualifications. I'd given them a quantum revolution instead. The quantum security crisis hit faster than anyone predicted. Three months after our meeting with Martinez Technology, a Chinese quantum computer successfully broke a major bank's encryption in just six hours. The global financial system trembled. I watched from my NSA office as the drama unfolded. Markets crashed. Tech companies panicked. And Martinez Technology's quantum security initiative was exposed as the empty promise it was. You need to see this, Anna said, rushing into my office one morning. She pulled up a live stream of a Martinez Technology Emergency Board meeting. Michael was sweating under the board's questioning. Our enhanced encryption protocols were just breached by a university quantum computer. A board member cut in. Our biggest clients are threatening to leave. What's your solution? My father jumped in. We're in negotiations with the NSA for their quantum-resistant system. Along with every other tech company in the country, another board member snapped. And from what we hear, we're not even in the top five contenders. I smiled. They didn't know that I personally ranked their proposal dead last. David. Dr. Wong appeared in my doorway. It's time. I nodded. We prepared for this moment meticulously. That afternoon, the NSA made two announcements. First, they were establishing a new private company, Quantum Shield Technologies, to commercialize their breakthrough encryption system. Second, they were revealing the team behind the innovation. My phone started buzzing immediately. Messages from former colleagues, industry contacts, and finally my family. Dad, the NSA's quantum team, please tell me this isn't why I think it is. Michael, this is some kind of joke, right? You're not really behind this. Mom, honey, call us immediately. Your father is having a meltdown. Instead of responding, I focused on our public launch. Quantum Shield Technologies debuted with a market valuation of $10 billion, backed by every major tech venture fund. Orders flooded in from banks, governments, and corporations desperate for quantum-proof security. Then came the meeting I'd been waiting for. Martinez Technology is requesting an emergency appointment, my assistant announced. Both the CEO and CTO want to meet personally. I checked my calendar, though I deliberately kept the stay clear. How about 3 p.m.? They arrived early, of course. My father looked like he'd aged a decade since I'd last seen him. Michael had lost his swagger, his Harvard MBA confidence shattered by months of failure. I kept them waiting 20 minutes. When I finally entered the conference room, the silence was absolute. My father stared like he was seeing a ghost. Michael's face cycled through shock, anger, and fear. Gentlemen, I said calmly, sitting at the head of the table. How can Quantum Shield Technologies help you today? David. My father started, then stopped, seemingly at a loss for words. Michael wasn't so restrained. This is your revenge, isn't it? Making us beg for your technology? I raised an eyebrow. Revenge? No, Michael. This is business, something you claim to understand better than me. I opened my laptop, displaying Martinez Technologies' latest financial reports. Their stock had dropped 80% in three months. Major clients were fleeing. Their market cap was now less than Quantum Shield's first day valuation. You need our quantum resistant encryption, I stated. Without it, Martinez Technology won't survive the year. The question is why should we license it to you? We're family, my father said quietly. Family? I laughed. You didn't consider family when you dismissed my warnings about quantum threats, when you demoted me to work under Michael because he had the right qualifications. I was wrong. Dad admitted. We were all wrong. But the company your grandfather built is dying because you chose convention over innovation. I cut him off. Just like you said I wasn't qualified, now Martinez Technology isn't qualified to handle our technology. Michael leaned forward desperately. Name your price. Whatever you want. I pulled out a document I had prepared for weeks. Actually, I have a counterproposal. They read it in silence. The terms were brutal. Quantum Shield would acquire Martinez Technology at a fraction of its former value. The entire board would resign. And most importantly, the company would be renamed Martinez Chen Technologies, honoring both my grandfather and Dr. Sarah Wong, 
whose faith in quantum competing had made this possible. This is corporate suicide, Michael protested. No, my father said suddenly. This is salvation. He looked at me with something like pride, though it came far too late. You saw the future when we couldn't. Or wouldn't. He picked up a pen and signed. The acquisition made headlines. Quantum security pioneer acquires legacy tech firm. The story of the prodigal son returning to save his family's company was too good for the media to resist. Our stock soared. I kept my old team from Martinez. The developers who'd seen the potential in quantum security. The rest, including Michael, were let go with generous severance packages. My father retired, finally admitting he'd lost touch with technological innovation. But before he left, he asked to meet privately. In his old office, soon to be renovated into a quantum research lab, he handed me a letter. Your grandmother wrote this before she died. She made me promise to give it to you when you proved us all wrong. The letter was brief but powerful. Dearest David, innovation isn't about degrees or qualifications. It's about seeing beyond the horizon, about believing in possibilities others dismiss. Your grandfather built this company on that principle, though others have forgotten. Don't let them clip your wings. Soar higher than they can imagine. Oh, I love, Grandma. I had it framed and hung in my new office, next to our first quantum encryption patent. A year later, I stood in that same office, watching the sun set over San Francisco. Martinez Chen Technologies was now the world's leading quantum security provider. Our encryption protected everything from national infrastructure to private communications. Anna knocked on my door. The new quantum lab installation is complete. Want to see? I followed her to what had been the executive floor. Now it housed the most advanced private quantum research facility in the world. Young developers, many straight out of college, chosen for brilliance rather than credentials, worked on the next generation of security innovations. Dr. Harrison came by earlier, Anna mentioned casually. The one Michael hired to lead their quantum team? He wants a job. I smiled. Put him in product support. Under your supervision, of course. Later that evening, I received an unexpected email from Michael, his first contact since the acquisition. You were right. About everything. I never understood what real innovation meant. Watching you transform the company, seeing what you've built, grandfather would be proud, not just of the success, but of how you achieved it. Through vision, not politics. Through innovation, not tradition. I'm sorry for my part in pushing you out. Though maybe it was for the best. You built something far beyond what Martinez technology could have become. Asterisk Michael. I thought about responding, but instead turned back to my work. On my screen, new quantum algorithms promised even greater breakthroughs. The future wasn't in corner offices or business school credentials. It was in seeing what others couldn't or wouldn't see. My grandmother had understood that. Now finally, so did my family. A notification popped up. Another major bank's encryption had been broken by quantum computers. Their stock was plummeting. But they were already calling, desperate for our protection. I typed a quick message to Anna, ready for the next revolution. Her response came immediately. Born ready, boss. What's next on the horizon? I smiled, looking out at the city lights. The quantum age was just beginning, and we were leading the charge. Not bad for someone they said wasn't qualified. Sometimes the best revenge isn't proving others wrong. It's proving yourself right so thoroughly that they have no choice but to acknowledge it. And as I watched our quantum computers process impossible calculations, protecting the digital world from threats most couldn't even understand, I knew we'd done exactly that. The End